and have your way. I'm just your vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take your glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Is this not America or is it? One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You know that word all is a big word. That means it doesn't leave anybody out. That means all the we is included. Doesn't matter what your skin color is. Doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. Doesn't matter what your economic status is. Doesn't matter how you pray. Doesn't matter what country you came from. All. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You know, America is the greatest, and I'm just being prejudiced, is the greatest country. And what does greatness mean? When it was asked, if you want to be great, then you have to become a servant. That means you serve people. And America was that that shining light that gave so many people from so many different nations hope. What happened to us? When we get to the place that we cannot even have differences anymore without hating one another. You know how babies, when they're born, they're born natural born lovers. They don't care what color you are. They look at me and say, can I taste you, see if you taste like chocolate? Let me see if you taste like vanilla, strawberry, don't care. Don't care that I'm a size two wrapped up in all this fluff. They don't care. <laughs> Not one little bit. They don't care. They don't check my bank account. They don't check my credit report. They don't care about none of that. Natural born lovers. But we have taught them to hate because of differences. Election time should not be a time of hatred. This is what this country was built on, freedom of choice. People came here looking for freedoms. And for me to be free doesn't mean that I have to deny you your rights or your freedom to choose. Or I have to hate you because maybe grapes is your favorite fruit and watermelon is mine. But that's what we have taught our children, that anything that doesn't look like us, doesn't think like us, doesn't pray like us, don't speak like us, then we're supposed to hate you. The devil is a liar. Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, let me tell you this little story. But this mighty king by the name of Matt Samusa, known as the gold emperor of Mali, West Africa, Make Elon Musk look like he's just a little pauper. Because <laughs> the value of his wealth was over $400 billion. The finest gold in all of the ancient world. We ain't talking about 10 carat or 14 carat or 18, but 24 carat gold. Said when he would go into countries like Mecca and, 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 and over there to Cairo, Egypt, said he would just mess up the economy because he would take so much gold the value of gold would just drop it like it was hot. <laughs> Boy, would well, I like to have that problem. <laughs> but one day he was sitting on his royal honey in his royal rocking chair. <clears throat> and his little sweet petunia was right next to him. And he was just rocking and stuff like that. And he called for his royal scribe and he told him, can you bring me the royal newspaper? Let me check out what's going on in my kingdom here. Well, when the scribe brought the newspaper, he couldn't read it. He squinched his eyes. 
He tried to put it far away like this. He turned it this way. He brought it closer. He said, oh, I don't want to read the news anyway. Same old, same old. Yes, yes, yes. Then he tried to get up and, oh. Them Ryder's brothers was bothering with them knees. Arthur was on one side and Ryder's was on the other side. He said, oh, that ain't working either. And then his sweet Petunia tried to whisper some little sweet nothings in his ear. He, eh, what, eh, what you say? What? What? And finally, out of frustration, you know, sweet Petunia said, you know what? I hope you done decided who you gonna leave this kingdom to, because you know you're getting old. He said, really? He said, you know we got one or two choices, die young or get old. She said, well, you need to decide who you're going to leave this kingdom to. Have you made that decision yet, king? Has you? Has you made? He said, well, now, uh, 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 uh. Now, men, you know, when y'all start saying, uh, uh, that means y'all don't know what to say. And, and women, y'all already know that, but they think y'all don't know that they don't know what they're talking, you know. And so he was saying, uh, uh. She said, uh, uh, what? He said, well, uh, you know we got a little problem here. What problem is that? He said, you know, we got triplets, and they look disalike. She said, I know I was there. <laughs> he said, well, uh, all right, you know, I, I, and you, I really can't tell them apart. Well, doggone it. She said, what? You mean to tell me we done had these children for 33 years, and you don't know your own children? What kind of king is you? He said, well, I, I just asked one question. I just want to know which one come first. That's all I asked, sweetie. She said, well, you got one question. I got me too. First of all, them nine months, I carried them growing inside me. Did you take them for just one day? Did you carry them just one day? Did you care? He said, well, uh, uh, no. Well, can I ask you another question? When I moaned and groaned them 33 and a half long hours of labor pain, did you moan and groan just one time for me, King, did you? He said, uh, uh. No. Well, then the least you could have done was stand there and see which one come out. That's all you had to do was just stand there and look. How hard is that? And she stormed off. And men, when a woman put her hand on the hip like this here, you know she mad with you. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Well, the king sat on his throne. He knew he was in trouble. And he tried to figure out, well, how am I going to decide which one of these boys should have the kingdom? And he called for his favorite snack, you know, when you get nervous. And his favorite snack was baked sweet potatoes and boiled eggs. And y'all know what that do to an old digest. I don't need to tell y'all. Relief is F-A-R-T. <laughs> and once he got that, he said, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do now. So he called for his royal servant. And he said, royal servant, listen here. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go build a special room on this palace. When the came back, got ready, thought it should have been ready. He said, where, where is that servant? Well, he found out that he built the room, but he didn't put no windows or no doors, so he couldn't get out. So I had to call for his wife to cut a door in. And finally, he came and he fell. He said, he said the room is prepared. Great king is ready. And the king called for his sons, all three of them boys, Kunta, Kente, and Quasi. Oh, they came. Yes, they did. I said, yes, sir, Father. And he explained to them, your mama been nagging me. Let me just cut to the chase. She says, it's time for me to decide which one of you young men up here should have this kingdom. And, and so since I can't tell y'all apart to see which one y'all come first, I come up with a little contest. I want you to go search the world over, and I want you to find something special to put in a room that I just had built on the palace. Well, not that first boy, Kunta, bragging, boastful, arrogant, know everything, no more than God. So if God had let him create this earth, he would have been a better deal. Know everything. He said, oh, daddy, I got this, no problem. He told his brother, step out the way, I got this. He went around the world to all the famous furniture stores, Habertie's Furniture, Dixie <laughs> Furniture, Went to that French place called Target's. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Wally World. Yes, he did. 
got all the famous Jack, you know, Jacqueline Smith, all the accessories and everything. Had the place that the HGTV was looking for him. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. He came, he said, Father, come on, I know you're going to love this. The kingdom is already mine. And the daddy came and he stopped at the door. Daddy, why you ain't going in? Daddy said, listen here, son. I don't go in no dark room. And the daddy backed it up. He said, but daddy, I got the fire. Listen, son, I don't go in no dark room. Well, that second boy, his name was Kente. Filled with humility. Said when he would talk, said, honey would just ooze all out the side of his mouth. Pass gas or sneeze powdered sugar just went all over the place. <laughs> Sweet talker, yes he was. So talk, so sweet. But now don't turn your back. Put a dagger in it. Filled with false humility. He told his brother, man, you crazy. Daddy don't need no furniture. He went to all the finest restaurants. Burger King. <laughs> Have it your way. Mick D supersize it. Out back, in back, you back, she back. Yes, he did. Oh, and I was sitting on my porch just like this. And he was passing by my house. I just took out some sweet tater pies out the oven. And I said, no, my boy, he got the sniffer. He said, Miss ma'am, what's that you got? I said, boy, I got some sweet tater pies. He said, can I have one for my dad? Boy, who is your daddy? He said, the king. I said, boy, don't you play with me. He said, yeah, the king, my dad. King, your I said, hold up, boy. I gave him one of my sweet tater pies. Make you want to slap your mama. I had some day old collard greens, you know, go in greasy, come out easy. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> some red rice made with that Roger Roy smoked sausage. Yes, I did. You know, corn, you can't have no collard greens without no corn. But I said, give me 22 minutes and I'll jiffy up a jiffy. Just like that. Ladies, I had to butter down so much, you Maybelline wanted to know my lips were so greasy and pretty. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have time to kill no chicken. So I tell him, I said, go on down there to the colonel. I don't want to give him that doggone recipe. He can't fry no chicken in no Kentucky. I said, tell him, I said, send two buckets, one for me and you take one home to your daddy. Yes, he did. Had it laid out. Daddy got the smelling thing. He came. He said, Father, come on and go with me. Daddy went. He got to the door and he stopped. He said, Daddy, why you stopping? He said, I got a feast fit for a king. He said, smell good too. He said, but son, I don't go in no dark places. And Daddy backed it up. Now this last boy, his name was Crazy. Very humble spirit. They thought they called him crazy. Now he was a little strange, now a little peculiar. They said, why are you always hanging with them poor folks, them homeless folks over there? They ain't nobody. He said, they somebody to me. See, his favorite song was, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living won't be in vain. He didn't care what color you were. He didn't care what your economic status was. He didn't care what religious back. Didn't even care who you voted for. He was all about love and what I can do to help somebody. And when they asked him, so what you going to do? What you going to put in that room? He said, I don't know. They said, boy, you don't never know nothing. But he knew enough that this was more than just the wealth, the silver and the gold, but the true treasure was the heart of the people. And so he went out in the woods, and he fasted and he prayed and meditated three days and three nights. That last night he looked up and it was so dark, it was cloudy, he couldn't see any stars, couldn't see the moon. And he looked at his hand and he couldn't even see his hand. He said, Lord, if I can't see my hand, in front of my face, how can I see how to lead your people? He said, I must go and tell my father I'm not worthy. And with that, he lit a torch to show the way. And he realized, poof, all of a sudden darkness disappeared. And he ran. He said, I know now what that room needs. And his brother said, man, where you going? He said, I ain't got time to stop and talk. I got to be about my father's business. And he went and he lit that room up. That was once dark. And he came back and he fell humbly at his father's feet. And he said, Father, can you please come and go with me? And this time, when that door was open, light came flooding out of that once dark room. The father said, oh, my wise and humble son, the kingdom is yours. Well, them other two brothers went berserk. What you talking about? Have you been in the libation, the royal libation? You must have been lost your mind. So Kunta said, he ain't brought nothing up in here. Daddy, look at all this fine furniture I got up here. I went all around the world and got all this stuff for you. And you, Daddy said, see, son, until a light came into this dark room, I could not appreciate the fine craftsmanship. Well, other brothers said, well, God, look here, Daddy. 
all your favorite foods and, and Miss Pearly Sue sweet tater pie make you want to slap your mama up in here. Don't get no better than that, Daddy. Daddy said, just like I told your brother, son. The light came into this dark place. I couldn't even appreciate the feast that you set up for the king. See, your brother found what this room needed. It needed light. What do you mean light, Daddy? Sons, y'all don't understand. The most powerful light is L-O-V-E, love. And this is what this dark room needed. This is what America needs today, love. And when we love better, then we'll get past our differences. When we love better, then we know we don't have to kill our children. Our children don't think that they have to pick up a gun and shoot somebody because they're different. When we love better, our children will love themselves and not commit suicide and un can't even fathom our children taking their lives. We've taught them to hate so much, and hate is that thing that you cannot control like a wildfire. The arsonists at the beginning think he's in control, but soon they find out that that same flame that they set soon consumes them. And so we've taught our children to hate so much that now it's destroying the vessel that that hate is in. And I challenge you, don't just love people that look like you. That's easy. Don't just love people that, that, that pray like you, have the same language, live in the same community. That's easy. Vote like you, that's easy. But can you love your enemies? That's the power. Because the only thing that can get rid of hate is not more hate, but love. I challenge you to love somebody that hates you simply because you're different and see how the power of that love will transform a life. I love you. It's not predicated on whether you love me back. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about that. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Put your hands together like this. This little love of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little love of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little love of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Tell your neighbor I love you and there's nothing you can do about that. God bless, God bless.